Greetings YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So I decided to do a um, second video in the same day as my introduction video, which is why I am wearing the exact same shirt and have on the exact same glasses and all of that. But this is my one week post op video. So I wanted to um, give a little bit of information of how I did for the week um, after my um, weight loss procedure after ESG endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty and just, you know, give some overall views and thoughts for those that may be considering having this procedure done. Um, you will probably see me looking at my phone because I did chronicle my um, journey on my Instagram page, which is fierce.esg.diva on Instagram. So I did chronicle that on Instagram. And so I will be kind of looking back since that has been about a week or so now, just to give you some of my thoughts about, you know, how the recovery process was, um, how traveling was. I did travel to have this um, procedure done. And, you know, just, um, just some ins and outs for those that are thinking about having it done that may have it already scheduled coming up. Um, and just, you know, some general information. So Let's get into it. So I am one week post-op and at the time of this video, I have not actually weighed myself yet. I am debating whether um, to weigh myself today, which is a Wednesday one week post-op on it's August 26th, or if I want to, um, wait, is it August 26th? Yes, it is. Sorry. <laughs> it's August 26th. So I'm not sure if I want to weigh myself um, today or if I want to weigh myself on Saturday because Saturdays was traditionally the days that I like to weigh myself. I might do both but I do not want to be scale obsessed. So at some point I'm going to, you know, pick a day and stick to it. If I decide to weigh myself today, then um, I will put my weight in the um, description box or maybe in the comments. Or of course, you can always follow me on Instagram again. And that's where I'm doing my up to date, up to the minute posting. So um, it has been one full week since I had my endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty. I traveled to North Carolina from Texas to have it done at um, True You Weight Loss with um, Dr. Christopher McGowan, who does have a um, YouTube page here and a, a website here. I um, traveled in the night before my um, procedure and then had it done early that morning. The procedure is extremely quick. It took about 35 minutes and and I was in and out of um, the actual operation room. I recovered for about um, two hours or so. Recovery was um, pretty easy within the um, actual um, hospital or within the center. I did not have any real issues um, recovering with anesthesia or anything like that. I do have a video on my Instagram page, which I made about two and a half or three hours after my procedure. So you can kind of get an update of how I felt, looked, sounded, all of that right after the procedure. After your procedure, you're discharged um, home. After they watch you a little bit, then you're discharged home. In uh, my case, I was discharged uh, to our hotel room with uh, my sister came with me. And I stayed um, that day, which was a Wednesday, and then I flew back to Texas Thursday afternoon. And so um, I really did not have any uh, issues with the traveling. I just made sure that I um, that I, you know, tried to sip as much um, a little bit of water since my stomach is now restricted uh, right afterwards you still have some swelling so you're sipping maybe one to two ounces of water at a time um, I enjoyed my ice chips during that time and on the actual day of right after I did a lot of sleeping because they give you quite a bit of anesthesia and it's still within your body they also give you um, lots of medication for nausea nausea and um, dehydration are the main two complications or issues that patients have after after the procedure. So um, I made sure that I took my nausea medication like clockwork. I made sure I took my um, heartburn medication because that can also be a complication, even though this procedure has been uh, has been showing significant gains when it comes to preventing heartburn, unlike some other um, weight loss procedures. But I did take my heartburn medication. I took my nausea medication. I followed my doctor's orders um, and I had no real issues traveling um, home the next day. Okay. So um, some of my thoughts on um, things that, you know, happen. I'm going to go, go to my Instagram page. So I'm looking over here to the left. 
So um, I had started kind of trying to do a little active walking uh, before about August 1st. I started trying to be a little bit more active and kind of watching what I um, ate. I lost about six pounds on my own before the procedure. And as I said, I um, entered in my other video, I entered the um, procedure room weighing about 269 pounds and I am five foot five again. So um, I tried to start being a little bit active. Uh, I um, The day of the procedure, um, I made sure to sip on, again, water, um, Gatorade and or Pedialyte to try to make sure I don't get um, dehydrated and ice chips and things like that. I was on a clear liquid diet, but only the day before. Four, because this procedure does not um, is not coming from the outside, meaning there's no cutting and any scarring. Um, they're dealing with your stomach inside your stomach. Then there's no need to really shrink the liver. So some um, doctors do not require you to be on you know liquid diets for a, a week or two like you would on some other weight loss procedures. My doctor required a clear liquid diet the day before and then um, one to two days after again clear liquids and now I am on full liquids as being um, post-op one week and I'll be on full liquids for um, another week or so until I'm clear to move into the purees slash pudding stages. So when I came back um, on Thursday, um, I just had um, kind of a little bit of gas. I think gas has been the main issue um, with me so far. Um, the first day post-op, I did um, post on my Instagram that was kind of very gassy. You do have some soreness in the upper left side because that's where your stomach is. Um, so a little bit of soreness there. I was able to walk five to ten minutes at a time, and I am taking extremely slow. Uh, you can, you know, move a little bit quicker. Quicker, but I wanted to ease into this transition. So I would get on my treadmill. I would walk five to 10 minutes at a relatively slow pace just to kind of get moving. Um, and then I was able to um, drink about 32 ounces of um liquids, fluids um, throughout the day, again, sipping one to two ounces at a time. And, and that was my day one post-op. And again, because, you know, your stomach is still a little bit swollen because it's healing, that's what, um, that's about all you can handle for a little bit um, in, in the first couple of days. So then on the, um, on that Friday afterwards, so this would be my day two post-op, um, I decided to have a um, hydration, IV hydration company um, come to my house and um, give me an, um, you know, an IV full of fluid pretty much to kind of make sure that I don't get um, dehydrated. I definitely recommend you doing that or if your doctor does uh, offer a package where you can get some IV fluids maybe the next day, they do give you several um, probably about 64 ounces or so, um, depending on the doctor, during your procedure. But this is two days after the fact. I think it just really helped with me not feeling overall, feeling um, kind of, you know, weak or blah. Remember, this on uh, this is day two of post-op, which means I'm still on my clear liquid diet. So I'm not really having any protein as of yet. But by Saturday, which was day three, I was able to um, start incorporating protein in my full liquids. So... Again, I still had some gas, um, you know, pressure and kind of gas pain, but gas pain was not really as bad as you would think it would be. Um, I have had a C-section with my youngest child, and I would say that that recovery is way worse than the one that I'm going through now. Like this is um, a piece of cake compared to just childbirth recovery in general. So, um, you know, don't let the recovery, you know, scare you or the, or the impending maybe gas pressure or pain because it really isn't that bad um the more that you walk then you'll start to kind of burp and it will you know it will um come out the gas will but of course this you know this is my experience with it i know there are some people who've had you know a little bit harder recovery than i have but again this this was my experience so um on day two post-op though something that i did want to uh, mention is that i um had a reaction to some of the medications i was taking so i was taking an antibiotic um, I was supposed to take that the first three days post-op along with continued nausea medicine.
medicine when needed. Um, and I, I think it was the antibiotic, but I started to have some um, pain and like fever or warmness in, in my forearm. So, you know, from my elbow down to my hand on both hands, it was it was very odd. And so I text my doctor. He was responded um, almost immediately. And he just told me to, you know, stop all the medication except for um, the the. Uh, Prilosec, I can't remember the actual generic name of it, but it's basically Prilosec heartburn medicine, which I'm supposed to take for the next six weeks just to make sure I don't have any issues with that. So I did. Um, after I stopped that medication, then you know later on that day or the next day, my forearms went back to the way they were supposed to be and I didn't have any other complications. So now as I am in the um, post-op stage, um, like I said, I'm week one post-op, I have been consistently um, advised to try to intake about 64 ounces of fluid um, a day and um, 60 to 90 grams of protein. That's what I've been doing. So I am on full liquids, meaning I'm not eating any actual food. So I have done a lot of protein shakes, sipping on protein shakes, um, clear protein, adding protein powder to certain um, soups, um, collagen powder I've been kind of adding in, and of course my actual liquids as well. The way that they do this is a liquid if is considered a fluid if it does not have protein. If it has protein in it, then that's considered one of your quote meals. So you do end up sipping a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot throughout the, the days because you're basically getting in, you know, over a hundred plus ounces of some type of fluid. In the liquid stage, um, it is also considered a, you know, a fluid or a liquid if you have popsicles. So popsicles have been some of my best friends along with um, you can have jello if you um, care for jello. That's also considered a liquid. Um, and, you know, broth and things of that nature are also considered um, liquids. If they don't have any real protein in them, then that's considered your fluids. So that's kind of what my post-op life has been like one week um, prior to the, uh, off, uh, after the procedure. I do not have any more pain um, other than a little bit of gas that sometimes wakes me up in the middle of the night. My doctor said that's the last thing that typically goes. So I'm waiting for the gas to kind of leave whole Hopefully by next week, two weeks post-op, I will be finished with um, all pain. I am walking consistently. I've been to the our local park. I'm walking 30 to 45 minutes daily. Um, in outside, I am in Texas, so I do try to go early in the morning or late in the afternoon because it is hot in Texas, so I'm not out there in 90 plus degree weather. But I have been tolerating the walking pretty well. I am not really hungry. I've noticed that when I think I may have a little bit of hunger, it's more so my um, it's head hunger pretty much or I'm thirsty. And so I'll take get something to drink and then um, I'll be fine. I have um, returned back to my normal daily routine. I am working from home as I'm an educator um, at a higher ed um, university or college rather. So I am um, working from home. So I I'm back, you know, doing that, but I'm also, you know, cleaning my house and cooking for my family and all of that, and I haven't had really any issues with that. So this is my one week post op. Again, I will try to post um, my weight once I decide to get on the scale or when I decide to get on the scale. Um, I'll try to post my weight. I will most likely post it first on my Instagram page. So please make sure that you are following me on Instagram. It's Fierce ESG Diva. There's dots in between that. Let me say that again. Fierce.ESG.Diva is the name on Instagram. Um, so make sure you're following me there for all of the up to date. Um, videos, short reels, and um, kind of what I'm eating um, specifically with different products and all that. Um, and also subscribe to this channel if this is the content that you are um, liking so far. I hope you all are safe. Be well.